Hi, this is Abbott Austin talking to you about the Structured Life Movement, where we try to help people to grow in holiness by using structures in their life, their spiritual lives. Here I want to talk to you about some of my own experiences with structures in the spiritual lives, how they've, they've helped me in my work to and efforts to grow in holiness. When I was in college, I had a sort of conversion. I'd been raised Catholic, but as I went through my teenage years, I started to hesitate or ask the question, should I take this all seriously? Should I be committed to the church and her, and her teachings and work on uh, my relationship with God as the most important thing in my life? I heard the Lord saying to me, yes, you should be doing that. And as I answered that call and had this conversion, what I found was that following certain structures in my spiritual life was helpful. So I mean things like being disciplined about finding times for prayer and spending time in prayer and, and doing certain exercises or uh, practices in prayer. Things like self-denial, it might be fasting or uh, abstaining from meat on Fridays. Things of that sort, I found them to, become, to be spiritually helpful. And yet we live in a culture that in a way looks down on such structures in the spiritual life. And so it's been a question for me, how do these help? Why do they help? And that's what I want to talk about. Let me explain what I mean by structures. By structure, I mean a directive, right? So it tells you what to do. But it's also a directive that after you do it, you can notice whether or not you did it. You can tell, you can verify whether or not you did it. So in the first case is the directive. So it's something telling you what to do. So give an example, to give an example, uh, outside of the religious realm, think about a recipe. A recipe tells you what to do. It gives you a whole bunch of directions to make some uh, food. All right, so it's a directive. It tells you what to do, and you follow that. But then you can tell or notice or verify whether you actually followed it. You can say, did I use the ingredients it said? Did I cook at the temperature it said? Did I cook for the length of time it said? Right, so you can notice that. Another example would be a speed limit. Right, it tells you what to do, drive under this uh, speed. But then also you can notice after the fact whether or not you did it. Right? So did you actually drive under that speed? In the spiritual life, we have structures like this. We have things like go to Mass on Sunday or Holy Days of Obligation, right? telling you what to do, and then you can see clearly whether or not you did it after the fact. We also have things like fasting. Let's say I uh, follow the rules of fasting for, uh, that Catholics have, where we say, you know, like an Ash Wednesday, where our biggest meal today is going to be more than the other two combined. Okay, you can follow that, and then you can see whether or not you followed it. Another example would be abstaining from meat on Fridays. Right? It's telling you what to do, and you can see whether or not you did it. So these structures, and there's other ones that can be listed, but these structures, they're helpful in the spiritual life if we apply them correctly. Now, my experience was that as I followed such structures about setting aside times for prayer, or how to pray, or perhaps some practices of self-denial, and I found them helpful for my spiritual life, still I could hear voices saying that you know, this shouldn't be important. In a way, when you're following structures like this, you're following externals. And externals aren't the most important thing, and in a way they're kind of dangerous. right? So let me first of all acknowledge there is a certain danger to this. You can follow these structures in the wrong way. And we see this, for example, in the Gospels, when we hear a lot of criticisms of the scribes and Pharisees. Right, so here's one way you can follow structures in the wrong way. You can do it in order to look good or to look holy. Right, so sometimes the Pharisees were doing this. They were following religious observances to look good in other people's eyes. Or perhaps also in their own eyes. They wanted to convince themselves that they were better than they were. Right, so uh, for example, a structure is going to church on Sundays. Do that, but then you can do it though in the wrong way where you're trying to look holy, whether to others or also to yourself. Right, so you can falsify structures. I, I admit that. We have to be careful of that. Another thing that can happen is we become attached to structures in a certain sense. And this can happen in a few different ways. One way is that when we follow a structure, sometimes it's going to have a benefit. It's going to be a spiritual consolation with it. And then we want to hold on to that. So we hold on to the structure. Right? And so then we become too attached to it. So this can happen in fasting. Sometimes it's a spiritual delight and freedom one experiences when fasting. But then there comes a time where you shouldn't fast as, as much or in that same way, perhaps because you're ill or whatever the situation, but you hold on to it too much. 
right? And that's not right. Also, there can be a, a certain scrupulosity by which you are attached to um, structure. So you can, in a way, you're so worried about doing the right thing that you kind of cling on to these observances and you hold on to them too tightly, right? So these are all wrong ways. We want to avoid those. And we want to be clear that this is a possible risk if we're going to follow structures. And we want to avoid them. But at the same time, what I want to say is using structures correctly is still very, very important and something we should do. So how do structures help in the spiritual life? Well, they help us to grow in virtue if they're used correctly, right? And so here I identify four ways, right? And this didn't come to me automatically. I just kind of did experience it first, so these were helpful. But in thinking about it, I can think of four ways in which structures can help us to grow in virtue and therefore in holiness. First way is by practicing virtues. So here what I mean is that a structure can give us the occasion to do what's good and right and to develop our virtue in that. So for example, if you set a time, set a time in your day for praying, that structure will help you to actually do the good act, the virtuous act of praying. Put aside 20 minutes to meditate, right? And then that becomes the occasion to practice meditating or praying. Also, what they can do, structures that is, they can help us to grow in virtue by protecting the virtues we have and guarding against vices. So here, for example, let's say, um, you know, if you spend too much time on your cell phone or your smartphone, that can be bad. It can lead to problems. It can be, lead to, um, you know, just a, a lack of focus. You become distracted easily. Also, uh, there might be stuff on your cell phone you want to avoid looking at, right? And so to guard against that, you might make a structure, a rule about um, not looking at your cell phone, let's say after 9 p.m. or only for a certain amount of time. So that can protect you against going into uh, bad practices that would diminish your virtue. A third way in which structures can help us is by probing. So what happens when we follow a structure, it can probe our heart, it can test our heart and see you know, how far along are we really in our growth in holiness and virtue. So for example, if you practice some self-denial, say you deny yourself something, uh, some food or something, and that makes you cranky, what is that showing you? It's showing you you're still too attached to the creature comforts of food, right? And so that can be a good thing to see that I need to grow in this area. And then a fourth thing is by pointing or reminding. An example here might be how uh, a married person wears a wedding band or wedding ring, right? This is an observance, it's a structure, it's something you follow, you put it on every day, you wear it. What's it reminding you of? It's pointing to your vocation, right? It's pointing to that married person's vocation. And that could help us in the growth and holiness because it's reminding us what we're called to do, who we're called to be. So those are some things to think about. We want to use structures rightly. They can be used wrongly, but um, they can be used rightly, and especially in those four ways. If you're interested in learning more about the Structured Life Movement and receiving materials to help you implement this in your spiritual life, please subscribe to this channel. Also, see in the description a link to follow in order to sign up for emails with more content.